Good morning, saints. Good morning, Calvary family. Good morning to those of you who are in our sanctuary today. In spite of COVID, in spite of snow, in spite of the cold, you are here. We thank God for your presence. And good morning to all of you who are in our virtual congregation. This is the day that the Lord has made and we rejoice and are glad in it. We are thankful to God today that you are sharing these brief moments with us. And my prayer is, my prayer is that today for sharing these moments with us, that God will bless you and your family in a special, special way. Now, for those of you who are in our virtual congregation, Please, please hit that thumbs up button. It doesn't cost you anything. It's so easy to do and like our video today because that helps our algorithms and it helps us to get our service out to more people. So we ask for your help in supporting us simply by hitting the thumbs up button and liking our video today. If you have not subscribed to the Calvary channel, Please, please do that today. And even if you want to hit the little bell icon, that means that you'll receive notifications of when our services will appear. And thirdly and finally, please share this video with as many people as you can. God is so wonderful. He is so awesome. And this is the season of Christmas. It is the most wonderful time of the year and we bless God for all of you. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Yes. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. So come on and worship with us wherever you are, in your living room, in your bedroom, on your couch, wherever you are. Sing with us, pray with us, preach with us, say amen with us, worship with us. We've come today to worship our God. Yes, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've come to worship the true and living God. Hallelujah. Jesus sent his son. I mean, yes. God sent his son, Jesus. We're going to worship him right now. Come on, oh, yeah. say come. Hallelujah. Come. Come, let's, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him. We're gonna worship and adore him. Worship and adore him. Come on, let's sing together. Say come. Come, come on and clap your hands like this. Say come, let us adore. Come, let us adore him. Song. Ooh. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Oh, Jesus is here and he'll always be with Emmanuel. us. Emmanuel. Whoa, oh, oh. Emmanuel. Come on and lift your voice and say, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yes. Oh, we love you. Emmanuel. Come on and lift your voice. Say, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Come on, sing it out. Thank you. 
should never know. worship the Lord today, then stand on your feet. Lord, have mercy. Come on, come on. Let's join the praise team today. Say we give you all you the glory. Come on, lift your hands and say we worship. Beautiful. One more time. We give you all. We give you all the glory. We give you all. All the glory. All the honor. All the praise. All my worship. I give you my life. Give you. 
God. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. God today. Oh, God, have mercy. I want to thank these praise singers, Lord. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. They just set a fire down in our souls. You are Alpha. Hallelujah. And Omega. We worship you, oh God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We thank you. Hallelujah the Alpha, the Omega, the Lamb of God. How we bless you today. Thank you so much, musicians and praise singers. Amen. How beautiful. Amen. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there might be meat in God's house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, and see if I will open for you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive. Let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for continuing to provide me everything I need to give you my tithes and offerings, to pay every bill I have, to pay every person I owe, and to be generous and help those in need. In the name of Him, who is rich under every blessing. Christ Jesus, my Lord, we pray. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Amen. We want to thank our Calvary family, and we want to thank uh, those of you who are with us today in the sanctuary, as well as... I need a handkerchief. Is there one? Okay, here's one. All right as well as those of us who are in our virtual community. Normally at this time of year, um, we do what is called a gift for Christ at Christmas. And those of you who can and will, uh, above our regular tithes and offerings, uh, please, please don't forget your gift for Christ at Christmas. Amen. On your birthday, we give you gifts. On my birthday, you give me gifts. On his birthday, we give him gifts. A gift for Christ at Christmas. Don't forget that over and above our regular offering. And indeed, indeed, we are indebted to you far more than my little words could express. Uh, just for your faithfulness, your diligence, Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, all of our obligations have continued. The insurance and the utilities and all the other bills that go with it, payroll and yada, 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 but Calvary, because of your faithfulness, uh, amen, we have been able to carry on lo these many months. And so uh, we just want to say thank you, Calvary. And then to so many of you, Amen. Thank you indeed. And so many of you um, who are not members of Calvary, and yet uh, you continue week after week. The trustees tell me about the special gifts that are coming in from this one and that. Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. We ask you to continue uh, to be faithful, and we really want to say thank you. Uh, the prison ministry has asked me to express to you, our Calvary family, as well as others, who gave to the Angel Tree Project. We really had a wonderful year for Angel Tree this year, and you made that possible. We thank you so, so much. 
Now, just a reminder to those of us who have not heard, uh, please know for those of you who use the Easy Tithe system, of course, you can use Cash App, Givelify, Venmo, or Easy Tithe, which is text to give. And if you need envelopes, call us, 718-297-2301, or email us, info, I-N-F-O, at cbcjny.org, and request your envelopes. Make sure you give us a return address, and we'll be glad to send those out to you. Uh, others of us, if we want to use one of the virtual uh, mediums, uh, you are welcome. Whatever is most convenient and easiest for you, please, please do so. But for those of us who use Easy Tithe, we want you to know that there is a special Easy Tithe app that you can download. And uh, I think there is a barcode that you can scan, amen, and you will be able to use that, uh, that app for your giving. But not only for your giving, uh, it has all of our services and sermons and uh, all the like that will be there for you to uh, enjoy and hopefully be blessed um, to have. Um, and as well, there will be other announcements and updates to keep our Calvary family and friends uh, informed of what's going on. So please, if you haven't yet, make sure you download uh, that app, I think it will be a blessing to all of us. Amen. We have been talking these uh, three past Sundays about the season of expectation. And I hand it for today's message to be the last message in that series. But uh, today's message is so heavy uh, not the sermon, but the subject, <laughs> amen, that, um, that we're going to come back and look at a few other things about this subject, the season of expectation. There's something. Why is this the most wonderful time of year? Because it brings expectations, expectations of hope, expectations of peace, expectations of of joy. And next week we'll finish up, but today we want to begin to talk about the season of expectation, love, the season. Why is Christmas the most wonderful time of year? Because Christmas is about love. And I want to share with you a passage of scripture that is found in John's first epistle, John, 1 John, the fourth chapter. And we shall read in your hearing verses 7 through 21. 1 John 4, verses 7 through 21. I read from the New International Translation. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son uh, the King James translation says, as a propitiation, but I like it because the NIV uh, simplifies it a little better for us, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. 
No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Hmm. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. The season of expectation, love, love, love. Tell your neighbor love. Love, 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 love. How did we get here? Why do we celebrate this holiday? Why is it the most wonderful time of the year? To be sure, Easter is a bigger holiday than Christmas. You know why? Because Jesus taught us so. He never once said, remember I was born in Bethlehem. But he did say, when you come together, do this in remembrance of me. Remember that I died for your sin. And remember that I rose on the third day. This is my body broken for you. And this is my blood shed for you. So there's no doubt that Easter, even in the mind of the Savior, was the most important thing. And he said to remember his death and burial and resurrection. Never did he say, remember the little enchanting tale about how I was born of humble parentage. My parents were so poor they couldn't afford a room at the motel, hotel, holiday inn. If your girl starts acting, I'm sorry, wrong song. <laughs> wrong song. He never, no, no. But it's just something about Christmas. Even more than Easter. Could it be the hope? Easter brings us hope. Could it be the peace or the joy? Or perhaps, saints, maybe it's just the love. The love that we feel in the air. The love between us. It's this love. I can't keep you long, so I've got to hurry on. But I want to tell you what this love is. And I want to give you three points after that. Then we're going to be finished. Now, y'all sitting here looking at me crazy, but I need some amens in the house. Amen. Amen. Did you know that your car cannot run without gas? Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't preach without amens. 
Yeah, your amens are my gasoline. So fill the tank. Even biblical scholars are hard pressed to define love. Oh, I've searched high and low my lexicons, my Greek English dictionaries, my commentaries, looking for a definition of love. To really explain to you what this love is, I want to give you two definitions. Hopefully they will be helpful to you. One definition is one to which I always and often refer, not always, but often refer. It was written in the book, The Road Less Traveled by Scott M. Peck. If you haven't read that book, you should read it. It has a cult following. There are some people who think that Scott Peck is the second coming of Jesus, though he is not, but he did write a wonderful book, The Road Less Traveled. In that book, he gives a definition of love. He has a whole chapter of love on love that's really wonderful, but this is his definition. He says that to love you is to want for you and to be determined to give to you what is best for you. When someone loves you, they will want for you. Lord, have mercy. I hope somebody is listening today. Because, you know, some folk don't want the best for you. Some folk are envious and jealous of the best for you. They don't love you. Lord, have mercy. I like his definition. When, when you love somebody, you want for them and you're determined to give to them what is best for them. But then the question arises, how do I know what is best for that person? So Reverend Hall, Lord have mercy, <laughs> please forgive me for my presumption, but I kind of uh, hmm, edited that definition, and I'm going to put it like this. When you love someone, you want for them, and you are determined to give them what God says is best for them. Yeah. And now, now it's, 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 it's not hard to make hard decisions when you know what love is really about. For the person that you love, you will always do what is best for them and what the Word of God teaches you is best for them. When you witness to your friends and your loved ones, you know you are loving them because you know God wants them to be saved. The word says, amen, that God wills that every person be saved and that none be lost. If God had his way, hell would be empty. Oh, but some folk are just determined no matter how much you love them, they just determined to bust hell wide open. We had an old preacher down in Texas, Lord have mercy, he's gone on to be with the Lord, W. Leo Daniels. He preached a famous sermon. It was entitled, What in Hell Do You Want? Right, some folk, amen, some folk just want to go to hell. You can tell them all the good, but when you tell them the good news about Jesus, you know you are loving them because you want what God says is best for them. That's one definition of love. But let me now give you a second definition of love that is based upon the Greek New Testament. The word, amen, that is used for love in the Greek New Testament is agape. Now, there are four words in the Greek language for love. You do know that. You've heard Reverend Hall talk about that. You know about the word eros. Eros is from where we get our word, English word, erotic. It is sexual love, sensual love, romantic love. I'm going to say more about that on next Sunday. Lord, have mercy, because, amen, you could just preach a whole sermon on eros. A lot of folk are confused about eros. And then secondly, there is stergo, amen. Uh, it's the kind of love that a parent would have for a child or a child for a parent. Amen. Sometimes it's used to refer to the love a pet has for its owner. 
Stergo, amen. Or, or, or the owner has for, how many of you have pets? Amen, amen. No, no, no pet lovers. Put your hand down, Mary Covenant. Mary Covenant had four cats. She had four cats. And you know what? All four of them ran away from home. They say, I can't live with this woman. They, they ran. I ain't never seen that. You feed them every day and they ran away from home. Amen. She had stergo for them, but they ain't have no stergo for her. And then, of course, there's this word, Philia, which is friendship love. It's the love between best friends, good friends. But the word that is used in the Bible for God's love is the word agape. Agape, or its variants, agapine, agapos, but agape is the base word. Now, this is what it means. It means to hold the love object in such high admiration, such high appreciation, such high awe, such high respect that you are driven by that love, by that awe, that appreciation, that respect, that high, you are so driven, you hold them in such high regard that you are driven to do whatever it takes for that loved object. Well, that's what the Bible teaches us about God. That God holds humankind, but also every individual person in such high esteem, such high admiration, such high appreciation, such high all. God thinks so highly of you that he is willing to do whatever it takes for you. Amen. Oh, my gasoline is running low. Amen. In other words, agape love is so profound, it's so deep that God says, I'm so crazy over you. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever, put your name in there. What's your name? We're going to say this together. Amen. Repeat after me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That victor, put your name in there. Yeah, yeah. In other words, God is so crazy over you. He holds you in such high esteem, regard, respect. He appreciates you. When he looks at you, he's in awe. Uh, can you imagine that? That somehow God sees you. So in such regard, in such esteem, in such appreciation that he is driven by his love to act on your behalf. Wow. This is amazing and it's revolutionary. And a lot of people, and I hope you sense what I'm talking about. I don't know that I can fully explain it in these brief moments, but I hope you can sense what I'm talk, trying to talk about here today. But listen to me, amen. Who has ever thought of you in that way? How many folk have talked about what mama said or daddy said that crushed them? Or what teacher told them they'd never do, they'd never be, they never could? How many black folk are here today? 400 years of struggling in this American society because this society has told us for 400 years we're not good enough. We are less than. Our thick noses are ugly. Lord have mercy. Don't get me started up in here. That something's wrong with our kinky hair and our thick lips. God doesn't think so. He made you. And he holds you in the highest esteem, with the highest regard. He loves you. He thinks the world of you. 
And it's not just that he's talking. This is the point. Agape is not agape until this esteem, this love, this appreciation is driven to do something. Our deacon has gone on to glory to be with the Lord, but how many times did we hear him say right here in the Calvary Sanctuary, love is not what you say, it's what you do. When you go to John 3, 16, I want to give you the biggest little word in the Bible. God so. How do you measure that? How big is that? Paul talked about the width and the depth and the height and the length of God's love. You can't measure it. God so loved you. He so holds you in such high esteem. Why does he think so much of you? Because he knows what other folk don't know. That the Imago Dei, the image of God, is in you. And he's not fooled by your socioeconomic status. He's not fooled by your education or your lack of education. He's not, no, no, none of those things matter to him. He loves you. The last thing I want to say about this kind of love is that it drives him to do something for you because he loves you. And this love is unconditional. No strings attached. Do you know that God loves the people that don't love him? Because that's agape. Agape just loves even if you don't love back. He keeps on loving you. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But God still loves that fool. Uh, I, I, I got to hear up and go here. I've been here too long already. Lord have mercy. Let me give you three quick ones. Three quickies and I'm done. Our text teaches us, first of all, that God shows us how to love. Ah, Read this text. I want you to read it all week. We're going to come back next week because I got to break it off in another kind of way on next Sunday. Amen. But God shows us how to love. He is our example. What what kind of love is this? Well, it's the kind of love that made God send Jesus. How did the baby get in that manger? Love. Why is it the most wonderful time of year? Love. He could have left us dead in our sin and our ignorance, our hatred and our bigotry and our evil. But love, he, he held us in such high regard. He loved us so much. He, he esteemed us so much. Amen. Amen. That, that he sent his son to do something about it. He is our example. And when Jesus died on the cross, he was our example of the extent to which love would go. He paid the highest price. He gave his life to love you. Because love is not what you say, love is what you do. When you love someone, you're driven to act. Your example is the father. Your example is the son. They teach us this, this, this unconditional, no strings attached love. Let me ask you a question. When you look at your brothers and sisters around you, on your job, in your home, at your school, wherever you are, do you see, amen, someone that you hold in such high esteem and appreciation and respect that you're driven to do something for them? Amen. When you see the homeless, what do we see? We see someone on whom we look down our sanctimonious noses. That's not what God sees. God sees somebody that he holds in the highest esteem. And he is our example. Oh, I've got to rush on today. Secondly, not only does he show us how to love, but he gives us the strength to do it. 
You know, Mary W., I can't love you the way God expects me to. God can do it, but he's God. How am I going to give you that, Dunkley? Unconditional love. Love that you don't have to return. Love that's not expecting to get something back. How do I give you that kind of love? It ain't in me to do that. Let me, go, let me go you one further. How do I love you when I know that you've lied on me? When I know that you've stabbed me in the back? When I know, Lord have mercy, that you've treated me like a dog? And you mean I'm still supposed to love you? I don't want to love you. I want to smack you. I want to do to you what you did to me. I want to make you feel what you made me feel. Uh, oh, go on and tell. I know you're not going to say it. I know you out of gasoline right now. You ain't going to say it, man. Ah, <coughs> uh, but listen, saints. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Listen, saints. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Mm. Listen, God gives us an example and you say, well, God can do it. I can't do it. In a minute, I'm going to get to that. But you know, no, you can do it because God lives in you. The same God. who thinks so highly of you. His spirit lives in you. And so now you can think so highly of every other person because it's the spirit of God, the fruit of the spirit. Where does this, where does this love come? It comes from God. They who love live in God. And if you don't love, then you ain't in God because God is love. I can't love you the way I'm supposed to, but the God in me can love you. I can't love you unconditionally, but the God in me can love you. When you spit in my face, when you turn, Lord has, you know what the problem is when you turn your back on me? Listen, listen, listen. You know what the problem is? Most people don't understand how radical love is. Because we have this childish, infantile notion that love is this syrupy, gooey feeling. Ah, wrong. Love is a commitment that says, because you are like this, I'm willing to go all of the way. Even if you don't go all the way for me. Yeah. Well, who, who can love like that? People who have the Spirit, people who have the Holy Spirit. Amen. I find that we do a lot of talking about love, but when love is really required, very few people love. Amen. The nihilist philosopher Frederick Nietzsche said that there was one Christian and he died on a tree. And you know what? He's probably not far from right. Because there are so few people who really, really love. Ah, the spirit in your life, it ain't about, you know, oh, we worship you. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's wonderful. But the test is what are you, how far are you willing to go for someone else? Amen. That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. No, I can't love you the way I ought, but the God in me, the Holy Spirit in me, the Jesus in me. Lord, have mercy. I, I, I appreciate you so much. I hold you in such high esteem. I stand in awe of you. You are wonderfully, beautifully made, Lord. You are God's creature. You have the Imago Dei in you. You're made in the image of God. And I think you're really special. I know you messed up. I know you made some mistakes, but I think you're really special. Why? Because the Jesus in me, the God in me, makes me see you the way God sees you. Yes, oh, I got to rush on today, 
But thirdly and finally, I want to tell you, our text ends by saying that love is a commandment. No, you can't do it of your own. If you try to love somebody, you know it ain't love. If you can do it in your own strength, it ain't love. Most of us do what's convenient or what's easy. But true love requires the help of the Holy Spirit living in our lives. You got to get close to God. You got to walk with God. It's in your prayer life. It's getting into the word and letting the word get into you. It's getting close to God. And the closer you get to God, the more his spirit will radiate from you. And you will have this kind of agape love, this kind of unconditional love, this kind of love that's willing to do what it take, whatever it takes for the other. And it's not an option, it's a command. We use our, I'm only human. That's an excuse for spiritual immaturity. That's an excuse. Well, you know, we all sinful. Yeah, we are. But if you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Love lives in you. And it ain't this syrupy, gooey kind of whatever. When I met Miss Marvela, I was walking down Broadway. She came to Union Seminary to visit me. We were engaged to be married, and we ran into, bless his memory, what a wonderful soul he was, James Melvin Washington. He was the church historian at Union Seminary. He wrote a book about Dr. King entitled The Testament of Hope. It's really about Dr. King's speeches and other things. Every black person needs that book in your library, the testament of hope. If you haven't gotten to get it, it's a good gift to give somebody for Christmas. He was a big guy, four, 500 pounds, I don't know, but he was a big guy. And his mind was bigger than his body, incredible intellect. But we're walking down Broadway, and uh, Sister Marvel, I'll never forget it. <laughs> Sister Marvel had on a pair of gray leather pants, Lord have mercy. And as we walked down Broadway, everybody was looking. <laughs> Even I was looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Brother Loma still is still etched in my mind. Mm. Those gray leather pants. Yeah. So anyway, we run into Dr. Washington. I'm going to be kind of frank with you. You forgive me, please. I do it out of love. That was a joke. One person laughed. <laughs> yeah. So I introduced him. She's my fiance. We're going to get married. Da 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 da. Uh -huh. So the next day, the next day, I run into him in the hallways of Union Seminary, and he stops me. He said, "Why are you going to marry her?" I said, "Cause I love her." He said, "Does she love you?" I said, "Yes, she loves me." He said, how do you know that? Uh, duh, uh, duh, uh. <laughs> you know, he said something to me that I thought was horrible. He said, is she willing to wash your drawers? That's what he said to me. I'm all in love. Sugar plums dancing in my mind. Gray leather pants on my mind. I said, no, I wash my own clothes. He said, yeah, but the day is coming when you won't be able to wash your own clothes. Let me ask you again, will she wash your dirty drawers? And then he walked away. And I didn't understand it. I was like, ugh, ugh. You know what he's trying to tell me? He was trying to tell me, look, man, love ain't this syrupy, gooey stuff that you think it is. Love is the hard stuff. Amen. And you know what? I went to her home, and she took me to visit her uncle. And her uncle... This big man was about 80 pounds in a fetal position with a diaper around his waist. 
And his wife took care of him every day. And when I saw him, when I saw him, Dr. Washington's words came back to me. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. We are commanded to love, not to like. Love ain't got nothing to do with likes. Nothing. I got to love you whether I like you, whether you like me, I got to love you. It ain't got nothing to do with like. It's the hard commitment, the unconditional commitment that I will do whatever it takes for you. Even when I don't like you. So think about the people you don't like and you can't even speak to them. You don't even want to sit on the same pew with them in the church. But you love. No. See, people don't understand how radical love is. It's not about likes. Listen to me. It's not about agree. You know, we love the people who agree with us, with whom we agree. No. It's got nothing to do with who agrees with you or with whom you agree. That ain't love. It ain't got nothing to do with likes. Stop it. No, no. And let me tell you one third and final thing about this love. We're commanded to give each other. Love is unconditional. How many of you have ever had this experience? You gave someone a Christmas present, but they didn't give you a Christmas present. How many of you have had this experience? You gave somebody a Christmas present, but the value of the present they gave you was nowhere near the value of the present you gave them. Oh, don't sit here and act like I'm stupid now. You know what I'm talking about. When it's unconditional, guess what? There is no hurt and there is no disappointment when somebody doesn't give you a gift back. Why? Because you gave it out of love, simple love. As a matter of fact, if you are a follower of that man from Galilee, this is what he said. He said, if you love your family, you've done nothing. He said, the heathens love their families. If you love your friends, he said, you have done nothing. The heathen love their friends. He says, when you love your enemy. When you give, he said, to people who can't give back. He said, then you are my disciple. And he died at Calvary. What did you give him back? What did I give him back when he died at Calvary? When you give out of love, you give because of love, not because you expect return. And you know what? There is a freedom in unconditional love. Folk can't touch you when you love unconditionally. Did you know that? When you, when you reach that, when the Holy Spirit in you, that's living so richly in you, when you reach that point, you become free. That means I can like you and I don't need you to like me back. <laughs> I can give to you and I don't need you to give. Amen. Guess what? And that means I'm not for sale. This Christmas, give a gift to somebody who can't give it back and give it out of love. Tell them I think so much of you. I am so crazy about you. I stand in awe of you. I so appreciate you that I am driven to give. Even if I don't get it back. As a matter of fact, it's better when you don't get it back. 
Jesus said, if you bless the folk who can bless you, you ain't done nothing. Y'all just swapping blessings. If you love the folk who love you, you ain't done nothing. But it's when, Lord have mercy. Can, can you sense how awesome this notion of love is? We'll be back next week. We're not finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what God said at Christmas. <laughs> He said, I'm going to send you. I've sent the prophets. You stoned them. I'm going to send you my son. I love you so much. I am so crazy about you. You, you, you. I am so crazy about you. And I'm going to go all the way. And you can't give it back. What, what, what can you give God for Jesus dying for you and me? Ah, that's when we start talking about. And saints, let's decide that we're going to be serious about love. Not just lip service, but serious about love. That's all right. You ain't got to say amen. It's all right. I hope you'll think about it. Read this text. Read it every day this week. And just let the words go over in your mind and in your spirit. We'll be back next week because I want to tell you a few more things about this agape. Unconditional, no strings attached, go all the way. Unrequited, unreturned love that God has for you and me. Thank God for Jesus. Someone, you may be here today, let me tell you something. The world may not think the world may not think whatever about you, but let me tell you, God thinks you're awesome. He made you. His image is in you. He loves you. And if today you haven't received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, God sent his son for you. Jesus paid the ultimate price for you. He only asks that you accept him, that you receive him, that you believe in him. Our text says anyone that says that Jesus is the son of God is born of God. Today, if you've never before received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then today I invite you to pray this simple but powerful prayer. God is not so much concerned with our words as he is with the attitude of our hearts. And today, if you've never before received his unconditional, no strings attached love, he loves you because he's God. He is love. Then today, receive him, believe him, accept him today. I'm going to pray this prayer and I just ask you to repeat this simple prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my heart, Lord Jesus, and I ask you to come and live inside of me. Forgive me of my sins and give me life eternal. Thank you for what you did for me at Calvary. Thank you for what you're doing in me right now by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know what? If you prayed that prayer for the first time, call us, 718-297-2301. Leave a message on our voicemail. Just leave us your name and a number where you can be reached. Or email us, info, I-N-F-O, at cbcjny.org. Leave us your name and a number where you can be reached and we'll be in touch with you on the next steps for you to take. Amen. Perhaps you're in our virtual congregation. You want to be a part of our church family. Well, we welcome you as well. Call us. Email us. We look forward to hearing from you. May God be with you.
all, why don't you join us in Silent Night? Silent Night, Holy Night. Chop! 
Amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for these wonderful praise singers. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for these wonderful musicians. We thank you guys up in the booth. God bless you. Today is just a wonderful, wonderful day because the love of God is spread abroad in our hearts. Not that syrupy, gooey love. That's not love. It's the hard nose. Boots on the ground. Go all the way. Whatever it takes kind of love. 